In this video I'll cover an introduction to Open vSwitch in which I'll primarily focus on a demonstration of using OVS. I'll start with a brief definition of Open vSwitch. Then we will dive right into OVS by creating a virtual switch and using it to connect a host and two tenant VMs on that host to each other and to my local network. All along I'll use some simple diagrams to represent network connectivity and how it changes when components are added to OVS. Finally, I'll cover a very brief look at the architecture of OVS. In future videos, I'll look a little deeper at some features of OVS, including using OpenFlow, creating tunnels like GRE and VXLAN, as well as some other configuration options. Briefly, before we jump into a demo of Open vSwitch, what is it? Open vSwitch is an open source, OpenFlow capable virtual switch that is typically used with hypervisors to interconnect virtual machines within a host and virtual machines between different hosts across networks. It is also used in some dedicated switching hardware. It can be a critical piece in an SDN solution. OVS supports many traditional switch features such as VLAN tagging and 802.1Q trunking, standard spanning tree protocol, LACP, port mirroring, flow export, tunneling, and QoS control. So let's jump right in and try out Open vSwitch. I'm not going to cover installation instructions in this video so that we can focus on implementation examples. I'm doing this demo on my laptop with Linux Mint installed. My laptop has an ETH0 port getting its IP address and default gateway through DHCP. So right now I simply have my IP stack in ETH0. So now I'll create a virtual switch from the shell. To do this I'll use an OVS VS CTL command. This command is used when configuring OVS bridges. So it's OVS VS kettle add-br for add bridge my bridge. Here I'm adding a bridge named MyBridge, but you can name the bridge anything you want. OVS VS CTL or VS Kettle Show will show us our new virtual switch. We see it has a single internal port with the same name as the parent bridge, which is MyBridge. This port is also mapped to an interface with the same name MyBridge. It is marked as internal to distinguish it from the other OVS ports like we will see later. I'll turn up this port with if config my bridge up. Now I'll check if config. This shows me my laptop now sees an interface called my bridge. If I changed my mind and wanted to delete this bridge, I would run OVS VS kettle del br delete bridge my bridge, which I won't actually do here. All of the add commands you'll see in this video have a corresponding delete command where you just swap out add add with del for delete. Let's look at what we have now. I've now added an open vSwitch bridge named MyBridge. At this moment, MyBridge is isolated, meaning it's not really connected to anywhere, but my local IP stack. In the diagram, we can see that ETH0 is not connected directly to MyBridge yet. For my laptop to get to the outside network, nothing has changed yet. I still go out through ETH0. Next, we will change this and virtually connect ETH0 up to MyBridge. Back to the shell. Again, my goal is to connect ETH0 to MyBridge. To do that, I'm going to run OVS VSCTL add dash port my bridge ETH0. Let's check the result with OVS VS kettle show. We can see there is ETH0 on my bridge. Let's try to reach the internet though. It seems I've lost internet con connectivity from my laptop. Let's see why in an updated diagram. With the OVS VS Kettle add port ETH0 my bridge command, I redirected ETH0 to be connected through my bridge as shown here. That's what I wanted, but my laptop is trying to get to the outside network directly via ETH0. Now, however, it needs to go through my virtual switch called my bridge to get to ETH0. So to fix this, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to remove the IP configuration off of ETH0 and I'm going to make the internal port called MyBridge a DHCP client so it gets an IP address and default gateway. Back to the shell. If config eth0 0 will remove eth0's IP addressing. DH client MyBridge will get the MyBridge port and IP via DHCP. If I do an if config to see if it worked, and it looks like I did, I, MyBridge got an IP address with a route dash n we see we have a default route via port MyBridge, which is what we wanted. We no longer try to go through ETH0 directly. Ping google.com shows we can get out. 
Next we will add two tap interfaces for virtual machines to use. I'll add two tap interfaces for our VMs and then I'll connect these interfaces to OVS. So IP ton tap add mode tap vport1 and I'll do vport2 as well. This creates tap ports vport1 and vport2. I'll turn these ports up with ifconfig vport1 up and ifconfig vport2 up. Now ifconfig shows we've successfully added two new tap ports. I'll add these new tap ports to OVS. So I'll do OVS VS kettle again, add dash port, my bridge vport1 dash dash add port my bridge vport2. With this dash dash here, I was able to pass two commands into OVS VS Kettle at once. I could have done this with two separate OVS VS Kettle commands, but I'm just showing this other way it can be done as well. With OVS VS Kettle show, I can see the new ports vport1 and vport2 there. You can see them called out as ports and also as interfaces with the same name. The difference between a port and an interface is that a port can contain multiple interfaces. You would use this concept when creating bonds like LACP for link aggregation. In this case, we are not doing any bonds, so you will just see a one-to-one -one mapping of ports and interfaces. Back to our diagram, and here is our updated setup now. MyBridge now has two new ports, vPort1 and vPort2. Next, I'll connect a couple of VMs to these new ports on OVS. On my laptop for virtual machines, I'm using VirtualBox. You can download VirtualBox from virtualbox.org. OVS supports other virtualization platforms too, like KVM and Zen, for example, but I'm using VirtualBox here. You'll want to check documentation on connecting VMs with other platforms. So the VMs I want to use here are VM1 and VM2, both Ubuntu images. I need to get them hooked into my new ports, vPort1 and vPort2 on OVS. So I'll right-click these and go to Settings, and then I will go to Network, and I'll say for VM1, I want its adapter to be bridged, which it is already here, but I want it to connect to vPort1. So I'll pick vPort1 and hit OK. And I'll go ahead and start that VM. And in the meantime, for VM2, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to Settings, Network, and actually it's already set here. I want it to go to vPort2, like it says here. I'll hit OK, and I will start that VM as well. So quickly, here is our updated network. It looks the same as before, except I've hooked up my two VMs. Notice that these VMs have a path to the outside network. They have their ETH0 ports connected to OVS. And from our steps before, we still have the OVS bridge, my bridge, connected to my laptop's ETH0. So my new VM should be able to get DHCP IPs from the outside router, and should then have internet reachability. Let's check out how our VMs are doing. Here is VM1. If config shows I got an IP address from DHCP, looks like I got 192.168.1.80 in my home network. Let's ping the outside world. I'll ping google.com and it looks like that works just fine. On VM2 I can do the same thing, so I'll do an if config. I see here I have 192.168.1.83. I'll ping out also and it looks like that works as well. I'll also try pinging from VM2 towards VM1, so I'll ping 192.168.1.80 and we see that the two VMs can ping each other as expected. Let's go to my laptop shell again. Here I'm going to try a new command, OVS app kettle. OVS app kettle is used to configure or query daemons associated with OVS. In this case I just want to see OVS's MAC address table, so I'll run OVS app kettle fdb slash show. And actually here I need to specify the bridge I want to do this for. So I'll say my bridge. And here we can see our two VMs are showing up on ports 4 and 5. These are open flow ports 4 and 5. So on one of my VM windows over here I can see the hardware address or the MAC address 080027F578E9. I see that over here on port 5. And I know that the other VM is, is this one here on port 4. OpenFlow port 1 here is my ETH0 interface. And port 0 here is my MyBridge interface. 
This is a little tricky here because we're talking about open flow ports. So we see ports 1, 4, 5, and 0. And we probably need to figure out how that maps to the ports that we know, like ETH0 and vport1 and vport2, for example. So another command can help us out there. If I do OVS OF kettle show my bridge, OVS OF kettle is a command used with OpenFlow switches for setting and querying OpenFlow parameters. When I do a video on OVS and OpenFlow, we will use that command much more. So with that OVS OF kettle show my bridge command, I can see that port 1 maps to ETH0, port OpenFlow port 4 maps to vport2, 5 to vport1, and 0 or local for my bridge. Now that I've mentioned OpenFlow and OVS OF kettle, there's an important point I want to insert here. As I said at the outset, OVS is OpenFlow enabled. If you're not familiar with OpenFlow, I suggest going to OpenNetworking.org for full details. You can also watch my introduction to OpenFlow video on my YouTube channel. So with this connectivity we now have between VMs and out to the internet through OVS, I haven't done anything in particular with OpenFlow. What I mean by that is normally with an OpenFlow enabled switch, you need to connect to an SDN controller or you need to manually add OpenFlow flow entries on your switch for any traffic to get forwarded. We haven't done that here, so why have I been able to have packets forwarded through OVS successfully without doing these things? The reason is OVS starts with a default flow entry that makes it act like a regular layer 2 switch. Let's look at it from the shell. So here I'll run OVS OF kettle dump flows my bridge. So this command I just ran, I'm looking to see all flow entries on my bridge. Here we see a single flow entry, and its action is the normal action. This means normal L2 forwarding, so it acts like a traditional, simple layer 2 learning switch. Of course, for SDN, we really want to interact with an SDN controller and custom up open flow flow entries. But for the purposes of this intro video, this default action is good enough. Now before I wrap things up in this intro, I'd like to do very brief coverage on the OVS architecture. In the video description, I'll link to a reference for this material from an OVS deep dive presentation that goes in way better detail. The three main components of OVS are vSwitchD, OVS DB server, and a kernel module. vSwitchD is the core component and runs in user space. The switch configuration for OVS, though, is stored in the database, OVS DB server. Because of this, configuration changes are persistent. They will survive a system reboot. The OVS VS kettle list command will show you the records of the different tables in the OVS DB. For example, if I run OVS VS kettle list bridge, we see my bridge and some IDs for its ports. OVS VS kettle list port shows configuration details of the ports from the ports table. And OVS VS kettle list interface shows configuration details of interfaces from the interface table. So here we can see the local internal interface MyBridge. See some information like MTU, link speed. There's vport2 scrolling by. There's Here comes vport1. And there is ETH0. You can see some statistics that are being kept as well in this table. So that's from the OVS DB server, and as I said before, OVS also has a kernel module. When a packet arrives to a virtual switch, if there is a cached match in the kernel module, the cached actions are taken. If there's not a match in the kernel module, the packet is punted into vSwitchD in user space. Future matching packets will then typically have a fast path through the cached entries in the OVS kernel module. That wraps up this introduction to Open vSwitch. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful and would like to see more, please subscribe. To connect with me, I can be found at www.linkedin.com slash in slash David Mahler. I welcome any feedback and connections. In the video description, I'll include some links and references for the content in this video which have more detail. In the future, I'll create videos including tunneling, GRE, and VXLAN with OVS, use of OpenFlow with OVS, and using some other OVS configuration features and options.